Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, we're here. Ruzi, yes. we're here. We are. It is our first ever podcast show. <laughs> um, and my name is Bui Mafoku. I'm a seasoned entrepreneur, luxury consultant, as well as uh, a speaker. And I'm setting out to really contribute to Africa's luxury growth mm. and who better than this guest that i have managed to secure today oh, wow. <laughs> um to introduce the podcast um africa and luxury is a luxury education platform and here ruzi we're really going on a journey to chronicle the story of african luxury um and really this is a concept that we will delve into throughout the series and throughout the season mm. And from a perspective that you will offer us here today, um, the show really wants to draw context and connection to the tastemakers of Africa, art, artists, mm. all of it. Mm. Let me not give my episode away. <laughs> um, and this podcast really embarks from a point of view of a culturally rich um, conversation, seeking to explore, unpack, delve into and inform our listeners or viewers, because some of you may be viewing this from... Uh, other platforms. Um, today, my guest is Ruzi Rusike, <laughs> and the title of our podcast is Curating an Authentically African Art Story with Ruzi. So, Ruzi, I don't want to give it away, but I, I must read this dossier, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I really, I really do want you to introduce yourself, but just briefly for the benefit of all my listeners. Mm -hmm. um, Ruzi is an artist, curator, and social activist. She's currently working as the head curator at the Melrose Gallery, my home. Yes, it really is. <laughs> my happy place. And um, she's previously worked um, at the South African Foundation for Contemporary Art. She was the head of communication and the curator in South Africa and France. Uh, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> How's your French going? Yo, let me not say. Is it french -ing? It's just bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Please. Um, so, Ruzi has curated, I think, one, obviously, um, and if you're in the art world or you love art, um, one of my faves by Piti Ganduli, which is Azibuyele Emasisweni, translated Return to the Source. Um, she's also curated the beautiful work of Mama Esther, and the Melrose Gallery is actually also home to Mama Esther's work. Yes. Um, and these beautiful projects that you guys have done, um, all the way, breaking all the way even into fashion, mm. um, I believe. Um, but, Ruzi, we can speak the English uh, and we can read the English. However, I really want you to introduce yourself. Okay, so <laughs> uh, my name is Ruzi Risike. Um, my full name is Ruazano, which means when women come together. Wow. And I believe that this is a Ruazano moment. So thank you so so much for allowing me to participate in the first podcast here today. And I'm an artist. I uh, started off as an artist because I loved um, art. It was a way in which I articulated myself. And it was a way in which beyond language I was able to um, find who I am. And then I was in that, became a social activist in terms of what it is that society wasn't articulating back to me and what it is that I felt that could be said through my work that um, isn't being said. And then through language, I realized that there's certain um, inequalities that start to personify itself or become a metaphor to somebody's existence. So that's when I felt that curating was so important. So along that journey, I started curating different exhibitions, both um, online due to COVID and physically. And yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> Um, that is, first of all, your name, we can <laughs> browse through that, how beautiful, right. and how, and how connected to the moment is it for us to be sitting here, and you're my first guest on this podcast, yeah. where women are really connecting with, just in the spirit of the moment, so mm. I appreciate that. Mm. Um, now let's get into it, okay. um, because there's so much already that you've introduced there, mm. which I'd love for everyone to benefit from, and I mentioned that. Africa on Luxury is really a platform for offering conversation as well as drawing context and connection with our guests. Because 
you know, you're, you're here speaking about art today, but luxury gets such a bad rep because yes. we think luxury and we think consumer and we think brands. Mm. However, there's a whole world that I want to um, reveal or expose or even myself discover because I, I can't really stay to be an expert in the space as of yet. Um, but art in itself, because um, as the episode is titled, Curating an Authentically African Art Story, mm. um, I mean, art is a visual... It's a visual subject. It's it's an experience. Um, it consciously seeks to create through the expression of one's personal own experience or perception. Um, and of course, it then takes on various mediums. And you yourself, I think, being in a gallery as a curator, have the opportunity to touch on most of those mediums, photography, sculpture works, uh, paintings. Um, what is art to you? Wow. Okay, um, art to me is um, abundance, you know, it's, the, it's a spiritual abundance that is able to um, live in a fixed moment, but it captures time, and it's a capturing of time for me when I say that, like, when you see a painting, you're not just seeing, um, for me, you're not just seeing, say, for example, beautiful artwork. You're seeing um, just the ways in which paint has been layered. You're seeing the way in which um, the tension has mm. also come through mm. in moments where one has to grapple with themselves. Wow. And, um, and that's the spirit. And then the abundance is the finished product, you know. The abundance is where you actually get to see yourself in it as well. You get to, um, it's a mirror, and, and, uh, and it's not just a mirror, it's an acoustic mirror, mm. an acoustic mirror that is able to sing back to you a language. And that's abundance for me, and that's what art is. And um, I love art um, because it's able to um, mirror, and it's able to sing, and it's able to be um, something that sometimes we don't have the time to be. And that's why people always um, say that art is a luxury um, object <laughs> because um, of that inability to have that moment of stillness. And that's why whenever people think of great art, they always think of images such as a Mona Lisa. Right. And when you see portraits like that and people are literally like <coughs> crowds actually gather just to see this tiny little portrait that mm. for so many people has been amplified to something bigger than. Right. And it's because um, obviously there's a lot of things that happened around the Mona Lisa, but that moment of just seeing that image, you seeing everything that you've amalgamated, everything that you've heard, everything that um, you've you've try to understand within being in society and when you see it it's just like okay um this is what it means to reach a final moment a full circle moment but you, it's a continuation so it continues afterwards so what do you do when you leave that acoustic mirror what do you do when you leave that point of self-reference um within yourself love that so love yeah. that <laughs> There is um, something that you said right at the beginning mm. um, and you've moved in that space as you were responding to this first question around an abundance of spirit and it's really stayed with me. Um, there are also very key values that you've mentioned around art. Um, mm. You've spoken of time, mm. you've spoken of history, mm. you've spoken of the nuances of quality in that, mm. which are all very much also values of perception when it comes to luxury. Mm. Um, you know, I loved when you spoke about also the contention with oneself. Um, you know, there's so much that I think somebody who, whether they are seasoned in art as a collector or even as a professional in the space or a novice, mm. um, could make, could you know, whether it's a collector or whatever, you know, just based on what you've, you've painted, mm. um, reveal so much about how much we don't know because it art has the ability to seem inaccessible. Mm. But a lot of what you're offering us here today doesn't make it feel that way. It actually makes it feel more intimate, more mm. personal. 
Um, and I love that. Thank you. Um, how has how would you say your own heritage and history, um, or even African tr- traditions, have really shaped your perspective of art? So, um, growing up in South Africa, I think that um, obviously going to school, I struggled a bit, um, actually quite a lot, because I wasn't good at your math, your science, and all the... You were a creator. Exactly. <laughs> but I didn't even know I was a creator. So, um, yeah, then it got to moments where in different English projects or science projects, you had to make... Uh, uh, say, for example, volcano mm. or d- different ways of basically understanding the subject. And I thrived at that because I was like, okay, now this is a moment where I can actually understand the subject as a whole. Correct. So, And those projects always came towards the end of term. And then, um, yeah, I s- thought that I did well in that. And um, then you also, art wasn't really part of the curriculum. It was more of an mm. after-school activity. Oh, like an extra. Exact, exactly. <laughs> so then I did that. And then, um, be- and then what happened is that then going into high school, then art was officially a subject. Okay. And then um, my art teacher told my mother that, you know what, she's really doing well in art. Mm. Um okay. That you, maybe she should go to after school. She should do it this as an actual after school activity. Um, so I did that. And then I think that obviously my mother is Gosa and my father is um, of South African descent, but he's also got Shona descent as well. Mm-hmm. So then that cultural, um, that also that cultural background within myself right. um, like in terms of how then in those art classes we were making portraiture. And then what is my portrait? How then do I describe my everyday life? Um, whereas it doesn't necessarily um, in my everyday life mimic everything that I am as well. Your so then, expression of self, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. So then I had to find my identity, but also reference um, stories as well. So through the stories that my mother you, um, tells us all the time, in the ways in which she shows up for herself, in the ways in which um, you even attend traditional ceremonies, but those moments of time are always separate from your everyday Everything. experience. Yeah. So yeah. then that also started to mimic how I then felt at school in terms of my everyday experience. I only got to experience who I was in moments of time. Okay. Oh, child. So then, <laughs> <laughs> so then it was like this moment where I was like, okay, in these moments, I can be me. Fully. Yeah. Exactly. In yeah. these moments, I can identify with I, I with that. self. And that's when all those moments in terms of that existed in isolation of my everyday life mm. started to come together and amalgamate to who I am. And um, that's how, um, I, I forgot the main feature question. No, it was just around, <laughs> and that, I think you've covered it, haven't yeah. you? Because you've spoken about how there was a, your, well, your exposure to art, yes. being, being through school, and mm. um, we cannot stress the importance of exposure and education and background. Yes. Um, however, art is so beautiful because it can be born anyway, because it's a gift that s- certain people just have. Mm. But you've also touched on something that's so critical, especially because here we are seeking out the definition of African luxury, yes. or at least luxury as a concept, Um within the context of South Africa Mm. or Africa broadly. Mm. And when you speak about how it was almost limited and not intentionally, but you could only really expand or feel yourself fully identified Mm. when there were traditional ceremonies. Exactly. And it is still the case today that there is something very evocative when you either attend a traditional wedding or some ceremony where... Africans are adorned in their traditional dress Mm. um, because there is such a real sense of feeling connected to yourself Mm. at that point. But it's unfortunate that we are unable to have that every day. Mm. Um, Well, at least not here in South Africa, but I must commend the rest of Africa with how, you know, your Nigerians will wear their attire daily. Your Mm. Ghanaians will do um, the same. Um, so I think I'm covered. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, because it's 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 interesting because like um, 
yeah, the, the way in which we adorn ourselves mm. is the way in which we personify who we are right. as well. And I Precisely. think that, um, t- like, South Africa is very Western in terms of how we, like, live, et mm-hmm. cetera. Mm-hmm. But I think that in, in terms of our spirit, um, our spirit is so strong in terms of the South African spirit because of the many articulations of who we are. We're Correct, not just yeah. one thing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we will never just be one thing. And I think that that fight to fight to the surface of who we are all mm. the time. We always revert back to the source of who we are all the time to remind sense. us of our roots. And I think that even though we unable to not always articulate ourselves in terms mm. of who we are, um, our spirit always defines us whenever we walk into a room in terms of who we are. Like even when I was working in France, um, everyone could see that there was a difference between um, my energy versus um, a, another person's energy mm. that also resides in Africa. And that's just because there was just, um, I, I, I love South Africa because there's just this um, self-belief and, s- and determination. Yes, and confidence. There's a confidence. Yes. In terms and a of strong that. conviction, isn't it? Yes. Um, and and, and it reflects conviction. in everything in terms of, our art, in terms of our music, in terms of our poetry, mm. um, in terms of our stories. In and terms yeah. of the story. Yes. Um, and, and, and stories are a beautiful mind for art mm. because, you know, you spoke about, there's something when you, when you said that to me, earlier on when I was asking you about what is art, mm. you said to me, it is the con- contention with self. Mm. And I'm connecting that to what you've just said now, which is such a major nugget around mm. fighting to get your identity to the surface. Because yes. in our spirits, we know who we are as Africans. Yes. But the fight or the contention is constantly fighting to have that more visible, more exactly. overt, more publicly facing, mm. isn't it? Mm. Um, now, what, um, which influences of contemporary art would you say are defining your signature of curation um so i think that what truly got me into um curating was um obviously via um school and being educated in a specific way there's only mm-hmm. certain things that you had access to right. if you didn't access honey yes. access seems to be the word today Ex- exactly <laughs> yeah i'm telling you uh, it seems to be our <laughs> word that's our word this friday yes access. yes and the thing is like i only had access to the stories that i was being told so yes. i had to then go out but the first story that was that i was told was um this uh, uh, it, I related it to Yinka Shanabora, mm-hmm. who is this artist. Um, he's he's um in he resides in the UK, but he's also of um, Nigerian descent, and he always l- used to look at the ways in which um, images, but more sculptures, um, sculptures, as well as um, the scramble for Africa, as well as books. Um, were part of the ways in which knowledge sustained itself, but a specific knowledge that sustained itself. And then I looked at that in comparison to um, Tabumbeki when he spoke about um, African Renaissance. And mm. what does that actually mean when we speak about an African Renaissance? Renaissance yeah. And that, so when I looked at that in relationship to Yinka Shanabara and um, his work in terms of even materials, in terms of how materials also speak mm. and reverberate its own language and how Energy. he wraps it, yes, around, say, that. for example, this microphone. And what does this microphone actually mean when you wrap it in African attire then, or Dutch fabric, yeah. Dutch wax fabric, yeah. and that history of the fabric itself. But um, essentially, what I'm trying to say is that with Tabu Mbeki's um, African Renaissance and um, what that actually meant, even with in relationship to the Timbuktu manuscripts in terms of um, this wow. history and the presence of history as well. And even how Yinka also um, did this whole thing of presence, but also history as well. Mm. And how presence also in this moment, we we have our own presence that we have in terms of our own history and our own language. Yes. Um, I'm missing my point here yeah, now. No. Uh, but like, <laughs> um, essentially what I wanted to say is that 
that led me into understanding um, how then I must create stories yeah. oh, and wow. how then are stories then manufactured and how then do stories um, retain themselves in a space and how then are we supposed to basically define them in terms of our own language. Oh, I'm missing my point, yeah. You got, girl, but, um, I'm, I'm trying the to audience. Say. <laughs> you got the point. I'm Thank hearing you. the point because, you know, your, your, and I really see that in your work because mm. I've attended many openings or shows that you do. Mm. Um, and I just love how the story is almost pervasive. Mm. So even if you're curating collections from different artists, mm. there is a very beautiful pervasiveness in how you're able to do that. And I'm not sure, it, it must just be the energy or the spirit that you breathe through it. Mm. Um, and and I hope that's the feedback you get. Yes. I hope, I hope yeah. that I, I hope <laughs> it's you're captured yes. and not misquoted in terms of what you set out because mm. I'm sure by the, the process, what is the process actually mm. of curating a show? Mm-hmm. So because you have just come out of Sculptex, which yes, I missed. The, the largest sculpture fest. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy and how you, big and, that and sculpture fest is. And you managed to transform Melrose every year. Thank with you. With such grace. <laughs> Thank you. And still, have, and still had to set up. <laughs> uh, honey, this, this girl is working. And you still managed to set up in... And you and I spoke about this. Mm. I called you and I said... Because you know I'm from Durban. I called you and I said, I'm going to Durban and I... I see you've got a show in Durban. Yes. And incidentally, the the library, the si- library by the city hall, and if you're if you're from Durban, you'll know, mm. as an inner city child, is where most of us found refuge and where most of us grew up, and where most of us really, for me, I said to you, it was my first, probably very consistent time and mm. interaction with art, and I didn't even know it was happening mm. because I was immersed in books. And I was immersed in, even if it was skeletons, but mm. it was very multi-sensory. Mm. Um, and I must visit, and I must visit now with my kids. You have to. Um, because it would be a, such a full circle moment for me around the juxtaposition of time, the mm. quantum of time as you've spoken, because you spoke of, because time doesn't cease to exist. Mm. Um, you know, history is able to map itself in the current or in the future mm. in such a, in such a beautiful way. Mm. Um, so I enjoyed I enjoyed hearing that. But how was Sculptex? So Sculptex was um, so basically the um, the Maurice What Gallery. is Sculptex? Maybe let's let me okay because I'm gonna speak. I'm speaking with the benefit of context. What yes. is Sculptex? Mm-hmm. Um, what is the background behind it? And yeah, how was this year's Sculptex specifically? Okay. So basically, um, Sculptex is as a recognition to the sculptors in and around South Africa. And why we do a spotlight on sculpture is because sculpt, um, sculpting is such an expensive form of making mm. work. Mm. And I think that a lot of the time, sculptures are, sculptors aren't recognized in the ways that they should be recognized. And it's weird because in Africa, that was our first point of first. reference in terms of art making. And also, guys, just go outside, <laughs> look at the monuments yes, in your cities. Exactly. Sculpture is actually everywhere and yes. it lives as part of the built environment doesn't yes, it yes it does um, it really, are, really does it does yeah it and does. it's such a and it's such an embrace form of art so the yes. thing about it you can walk around it you can actually feel the 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 breath of the mm. artist within it mm. and i think okay, that i love that um Sculpture is it's always under-recognized, and also female sculptors are always um, not part of the language in terms of art in general, but mostly in terms of sculpture, sculpture. because of how maybe how bold it is to make a sculpture that is bigger than you, or right. how intimate it is to make a sculpture that is smaller than you, and always in terms of um, these moments of pureness or pure articulation, women are always pushed out or aged out so with sculpt mm. eggs um we try to spotlight on those issues we try to spotlight on both female artists um female sculptors and different ways of also making sculpture because in south africa we don't only use bronze because yes. bronze is a western form of um 
work I, or no, material. I did not know uh -huh. that. <laughs> but it also is South African as well, African maybe to say. But go deeper. Uh, uh -huh. Go deeper for me there for a moment. I did not know bronze wasn't a. It is. is it because the raw materials? I think because of the bronze has always been part of. Um, basically, um, what I should say is that. Basically, I think as Africans, we always look to our environment in okay. terms of how we make. We don't look outside of our environment. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that currently in what people define as a consumerist society, mm. um, okay. a lot of artists or a lot of sculptures are looking at ways in which they will maybe work with plastic or, or okay. basically every uh, found it's material, other mediums. other mediums. Natural to the setting. Exactly. And that's, that's an articulation of time. That's an articulation of a moment right now. And yes, it's not... I think that bronze is part of the moment, but it's not the full lived moment right now. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, like, um, terms such as sustainable art are now put into that language. That, okay. But it's okay. not sustainable that art. So it's important. like, it's, it's, a, it's, what, it's what is there right now. Yes. And I think that that's what with Sculpt X we try to also articulate is that there isn't just one language in terms of speaking about art. There isn't just one way of speaking about sculpture. So it's a, that's why we try to make it the larger sculpture fair, not just it a re small... It really is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's grand. Yes. <laughs> um, it's, it's, you know, and I love how it manages to, to just break the barrier of mm. self mm. for me when when i have attended it before it felt you know and they sculptures all the time around the precinct yes um, and i was actually just showing my kids the other day <laughs> to say hey you know um there's one i think that you have opposite the gym yes um yes and i was and and i always and as you know one of my passion areas when it comes to art is art education particularly mm. when it comes to children mm. and i think That's you true. have said that you are in this career because of the exposure, because of a teacher, because of someone who harnessed a natural gift that they saw. Mm. But on sculpture, I would then imagine that for Africa, clay would be probably a yes. more dominant medium yes. or, re or, or raw material. Mm, but it's not part, funny enough, it's not, people don't use it all the time because it is not um, seen as... Um, luxurious. Yes, luxurious <laughs> or valuable. Yes. Um, so, yes, it gets excluded from the narrative because of taste. Of, and of who, the tastemakers. Yes, the tastemakers. Which are... Which, That's which, actually so... Or it gets put into craft. Yes. It's not part of the art language. Which, which, which somewhat cheapens it. Exactly. However, and, and I think this is what we set out to do a lot. So through my consulting business, Noble, yes. I said to you when we met for a coffee the other day that it's really about restoring African and mm. African nobility. Yes. Hence the name Noble, consulting. Mm. Um, and this is the universe in which this work, um, this purpose work of Africa on luxury as a medium and as a platform lives. Um, I mean, I just last year, two years ago now, oof, it will be two years ago now, mm. um, actually was very, was part of, so I commissioned a sculpture, I commissioned a bust yes. um, to gift to someone. Yes. And when we speak about clay, as a, as a, when you're saying that it's crafty, I remember, so I worked obviously hand in hand with this, a sculpture artist. Mm. And to be part of the process was an honor to begin with. Mm. Um, however, it was distressing at times because <laughs> I was like, it's starting to look the same. <laughs> oh my God, it's artists. <laughs> like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like it's been weeks and weeks and it's starting yes. to look the same. But so I specifically commissioned a bronze bust because mm. now you're educating me that. And, I, and, and when I look at my own background, even if, if, as I close my eyes, mm. it's dotted with bronze looking more elevated and luxurious. Yes. Um, presidents, monarchs, all of those people mm. are... There's nothing wrong with that. There, yeah, nothing there's wrong absolutely with, nothing yes. wrong with it. But I suppose I was gifting somebody very special to me and it mm. was... I went with the most elevated that I could access because I wanted it to be beautiful. Mm. But the process of it was interesting because mm. she actually starts off with clay. Yes. And she sculpts the whole thing and gets the 3D or the 
the, fo- the, the actual person mm. brought to life in clay. Mm. And then it goes into, give me, what, where does it go for? It goes into, oh, I don't really know the process, but it's going to that fire. Yeah. It goes into, but funny enough, my Noria Mabasa still works like that, just with the clay process. Okay. Okay. And she actually digs a hole underneath, like in the ground, and she puts the actual sculpture in the ground. Back into the ground. Yes. And I think that what's interesting about bronze is that, you know, when you talk about this whole thing of it being luxurious, yes. it, it, uh, people forget that because people want to capture time and capture every little detail and not allow it to respond to time as well. And I think with Mamnoria's works, um, it, re- it has this fragility to it as well. Um, like when it comes out, there's something so like spiritual about it, how she works. There, and there, mu- there must be because yeah, you're taking from the earth first of all. And the fact that you said that's how they, everyone starts. That's uh, but like <laughs> it's weird. Like it, it, the, there's different processes in terms of this unlearning. You know, in yeah. order the to... The foundry, I think they called it yes, the foundry. foundry. Yes, a foundry. Yes. They go to the foundry. <laughs> I'm now searching. Yes, I was thinking... <laughs> what, I was is that, what is that like, oven called? <laughs> <laughs> I remember going... And it's hot in there. It's yes. so hot in there when you go into it. But with Mamnoria, and in... in um. In, uh, in contrast to that process, hers is not so... Um, it's not so you're not fighting okay. anything. Okay. You're not um you're not you're not like grappling with this heat and everything. You're not you're not you're not in contrast mm. with that process. You with her, you in flow with it. You you are speaking with it. You're with collaborating it. with I the get, earth oh, wow. okay. and the clay and everything. And when it comes out, you're like and sometimes it doesn't come out. Sometimes it breaks. It falls apart. But but but, but you, at least you gave it. Yes. You dignified it. Yes. Um, so does she then? When you're saying that she then digs it, digs it, digs it back into the ground. Yes. Is that at the end of the process or is part of the it's process? Post, it's part of, of the process. Curing or yes, of curing. Yeah. Look at you Girl, giving me the language. I've been spending <laughs> time with you. <laughs> like I, I was just spending time with you. Like I forgot all this. Uh, yeah, I'm just like, girl. My <laughs> research was done. I'm ready. No, but like literally, and that's why we sculpt eggs. Um, it's so. That's why we we feel like it's so important to showcase artists yes. um, that are established, like Mam Noria, in collaboration with artists that mm. are upcoming, and showcase how they make work, even with technology, you know, with these with computers, yes. etc. And what then are we? What then? It's are we saying now? What then are, what, who are we now then? And it's not to eliminate people, edge them out of the story. Because I believe that the fact that, um, Mam Est, not Mam Est, sorry, but the fact that Mam Noria is now part of the language when we speak of, of, in, sculpt. of sculpture, it's, it's, it's frightening because then we lose a sense of, Self, we lose a sense of who we are as Africans. We lose, we lose our pride. Mm. And even when I was telling you that time when we went for coffee, um, about the um objects that I saw from Munamaptapa mm. and the gold objects and how those were even made, and they're so sculptural in terms of how they articulate themselves they as ought jewelry. To be because yeah, even ju- you know now you yes. now you now you you're introducing something else around. Even jewelry is sculptured because there's, you know, and you always are wearing such beautiful yeah, to them. jewelry. <laughs> you are <laughs> uh, beautiful always, um, and 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 I'm not great at it, but mm. I, I I mean, there's this friend of mine. She wears the most beautiful, bold, chunky pieces. Yes, and those are it just exists. It's it's just like. It's it's so powerful, and the, even the way that was made, like melting of gold, and what you're speaking about in terms of the foundry, that that was even itself the gold and the melting process and just the making process. It's such a beautiful um, um, collaboration with yes. nature, and that's what I'm trying to say about um, going back to found material and sustainability. Um, it's not sustainable. It's part of us because yes. we collaborate we're constantly in collaboration with our environment we whether never, we're conscious to it or not yes uh, um whether we're conscious to it or not mm. um wow okay yeah Sculpt- so sculpture i must state here is by far my 
favorite media. Yeah, you love it. You know, like you love it. You really when you do. had that other space and it was all sculpture, mm. it it just. I also just feel it's more humanized for me because art can be very abstract and therefore lacking in my understanding or interpretation. Mm. Um, and I, I have something particular about the kind of art that I love buying. Mm. Um, and for me, it must have faces. Mm. For me, it must... Obviously, I have a, my, my, my palette for art is very pan-African. Mm. I must state that up front. But my, the type of art... So, you know, when we talk the Basquiat, and it's, all, it's almost very disruptive for me. And perhaps it's the, it's the season I'm in in my life where I just find that we need... And, and perhaps media itself, we don't see enough depiction of Africans in beauty and glory. 100%. Um, so I am quite deliberate about soliciting art that shows faces, mm. soliciting art that shows Africans joyfully, positively. Mm. Mm. Um, I, 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 I just beat a friend in an auction. Um, he was bidding against me and he <laughs> thought he'd win. <laughs> And, and I've, and I've, so, so there's a new piece that I just acquired and it's, 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 it, it really just captures gentlemen, like two guys, just like, you can tell that they're bantering, but, mm. you know, wearing in their Sunday best, but mm. beautiful African artist as well. Um, let's, 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 let's get closer now to, to luxury as, itself, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah. Guys. Silele, as I'm we asleep. are fast asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm about to start making luxury extensions at this point. Honestly. Um, and, and I spent time, and this is my, I suppose, my intrigue with it, because I spent an extensive amount of time, like almost 18 months researching just the concept of luxury mm. and the idea of luxury. Mm. Um, and, you know, there isn't a single definition. Um, I don't think it's possible to have a single definition of what luxury is. Because it is deduced from a very dynamic and progressive concept. It's mm. constantly progressing in its idea and what it is. Um, and and we many have mm. attempted to define it. Um, but the subject, for me at least, where I'm sitting with it now is, is around, because it's such an elusive concept as well, is around the values of perception. Mm -hmm. And some of which we've touched on here without even realizing, like you spoke about time, you spoke mm. about craftsmanship, you spoke about quality, um, there is an element of price in that. All of those are sort of the non-tangibles that without realizing are shaping our definition of luxury um, all the time. Mm. Your purchase decisions, mm. um, what informs that? You know, is it a beautifully crafted garment if you're into fashion? Or is it the price of the garment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and as a marketer, I understand the role of brands as mm -hmm. well in shaping uh, people's consumption behavior. Mm -hmm. um, but there is, there is this logic that differs from market to market when it comes to luxury. And in theory, I mean, the idea itself can be interpreted differently by different people. Um, and it's on the basis of the cultural setting and the, the culture setting that, and I've looked at the West, so I've looked at the global West, I've looked at the global South, mm. I've looked, um, which we're in here, I've looked at the East, because I think Asia has so much, or in particular the Chinese have done so much for shaping or challenging what we regard as luxury. Um, so what, when we say luxury, what, 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 what is that definition for you? Mm. Yo, it was hard. It was hard to actually define, I won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said about the values of perception now. Um, so that's why I literally went to different family members. I'm like, what's a luxury? Yes. And I wanted to provoke that. <laughs> yes. That's, that's uh, the whole point. So even the name, um, Africa on luxury, yes. it is us really shaping Africa's perception of luxury. Mm. And we should take responsibility over it yes. at the risk of the Western one being imposed mm. and us never having a true identity of our own African luxury. Exactly. And so my life's work going forward is really invested in, in and, and there's, there's information is scanned, so there isn't enough of it, mm. but really like sitting with people like you in conversation is giving us language. It's mm. giving us identity, therefore, of 
what is our like, African luxury? Yes, it's. It, I thought it was going to be simple because I, I work in <laughs> arts. Like luxury plus yes. Africa. <laughs> you know? But like, uh, I, I literally um, struggled. I really did because then um, my brother was even saying, for him, luxury is just being with family. Mm-hmm. And then my sister was like, um, luxury is just having time and having my own space to be who I am. And um, I was like, okay, fine. And for uh, you. And for me, what it <laughs> is, is just that um, luxury truly is about, so I've got two versions of what luxury is for me. Got it. So in terms of me, um, I believe luxury should be those moments where you're able to, um, and I was saying to my sister, watch the unfolding of time. Beautiful. You're able to sit and actually, like people always say, they they in pure luxury when when they're at a spa or they in pure luxury when they feel that they can adorn themselves in something you know and those are different versions of how um, people have either captured time through how they adorn themselves or be within time in terms of how they rest within it but i believe that time luxury really is um that moment where um, your soul aligns to time. Wow. And Ruthie. when your soul is whoa, able whoa, to... Whoa, whoa. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> We're going to need a, an intermission, <laughs> please. Because no. I need to sit in that. Yeah. I mean... Slowly. Slowla. Okay. Slowla is my okay, kid. Fine. My child, Slowla. <laughs> okay, okay. But you speak about African and you speak about luxury. So what is the African soul And what is luxury is time. So I believe that um, when I think of African luxury and when I think of luxury, it should be those moments where um, your soul is able to rest upon um, the, the your sense of time you know whether it's through how you smell something how you um be within yourself you know mm. and how you rest and your soul is able to just rest you know and that's wow, why people rest. find moments where you know like during covid everyone's like um they felt so at peace um um when people like there was this moments where yo they thought they were gonna go, but it was so peaceful because there was a light within it. But then mm. they came back mm. to the to the sense, to the, to the to rat race. Sense, yes, yeah. But that they, but then when people now get out of it, they're like yo that was such a luxurious moment to just be wow and to I have encapsulate never that my in myself, you know. But I think that sometimes the perception of luxury is this thing of you supposed to um, be within something be um be in be around people mm. be within the top spaces lo- yes yeah. and that's why i was unable to then people think it would come easy to me because i'm in art i'm in those spaces i am in all those beautiful cocktails all events. the ingredients are there yes for for you to for, be yes the, the the to be the 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 brand for luxury yes exactly but i think that those moments are just different versions or different frequencies of time but and and being within this world that we are in yeah. but it's not an encapsulation of luxury it's not that, that and, is true and those moments actually take senses like say for example when you walk into a room when you go to a cocktail event they purposely create scent so that you're able to then translate yes. a different connect, w- connect with time with exactly the but they create they are they're making sure that you associate to their perception of what it is that you should perceive as luxury. But we all carry luxury within ourselves because oh my God, we all Rosie. have a soul. We all <laughs> have um, this bedrock in terms of ourselves. So that's why I think that our perception has been so distorted that um, we forget that um, luxury is just... Um, I believe that even in this moment right now, you're making me attain my sense of luxury again. You're making me attain what it is to go back 
to those moments where I don't need to go to a spa to feel rest. I don't yes. need to go to, um, I don't wow. need to go and buy something to feel like, oh my word, I've reached the pinnacle of what it is to um, be in luxury. I don't need that. I really, truly, honestly need is um, my soul and my time. And mm. once you um, pause that and mm. once you rest within that, then you're in a true definition of luxury. luxury. And ah. that's the ascendance of oneself because to to be in African luxury is to ascend. To ascend yes, to, to, to your... To and your it's not self. even to a higher self, isn't it? No, it's to yourself. It's to it's yourself. back to yourself. Exactly. And that's what all those moments, those perceived moments of luxury try to make you ascend to. Mm. Even when you are in... Because um, obviously working in Maros, we have different spaces in which people always go to, like yes. the car the shops and, and everything. All of that. Yes, but those are moments where you're sent, even when you go to fine dining, you know, mm. you're sent with via your senses to this taste of what it is to actually go to oneself. So I think that, um, yeah, I believe that luxury is and an African luxury is a form of ascending to self and i think that's a piece is like peace i guess yeah, yeah. Th that is mm. so beautiful that is and i hope that and it's not like glamorous yes. i'm like and i think and that's what i was struggling <laughs> with i'm like oh my word it's not glamorous what am i is this really like I, am i really sure that this is what i accept am I, that i i fully accept that i yeah. feel that at the base of my soul yes because in this journey we're on of restoring mm like the nobility to Africa and exactly. Africans. Mm. Um, I, you know, I do, and, and, and this is exactly what I've been grappling with, to mm. say, I do not believe that luxury in Africa can exist the way it does in the West. It can't. I know that it's been introduced to us as such. Mm. However, there ought to be a different lens through which we articulate, experience mm. it, consume mm. it. Mm. And what you're saying is really, and I hope that as people are watching this or people are listening to this, I hope that it drives conversations and comments mm. and own feedback around and even prompts conversations in your own circles because, yes. you know, there's there's even luxury stock files now where people are just out to buy luxury brands. Yes. Um, you know, let's buy each other expensive handbags, which yes. is great. Because it's great. all those I things are those things. all those things are part of the things we adorn ourselves with. Yes. And they do evoke a sense of identity and feeling and whatever. Mm. But you know, and, and I also know a whole community of people that set out to buy specifically African brands mm. luxury or not but mm. you 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 put the price to it and decide what it is for you yes. but with what you're saying you know like you know I, I i've got here that like art luxury has always diversified itself by being characteristic of inaccessibility yeah rarity and mm. incomparability mm. um historically um and i and i had to go to like founding fathers of luxury and books and yes. academic books and yes. journals. Mm. And I mean, historically, it acted as a lifestyle enabler, concentrated for an elite few, mm. endowed with the spending power to acquire it, mm. right? Affluent consumers are enabled with the access to indulge in luxury hedonistically. And this idea of hedonism, mm. which is very self, mm. which is very... Because you also spoke about, you know, you said your brother, for example, or was it your sister said for her, your brother said for her, for him, spend luxury spending time with family. Yeah. Um, and your sister said it's time. Mm. Oh, my mom actually said. What did your mom say, girl? I forgot. I and mean, <laughs> you're talking about that now, about the, like, my mom literally said that um, what the problem is, is the language in which we, language we, 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 um, we speak when we speak of luxury yes and and because she speaks like so many different languages um she she basically was like in every language the, there's something else that articulates itself when speaking of l luxury and um in english the language that we speak in most of the time um it's taken away that um that that access to accessing um, luxury. Mm -hmm. And I think that even now, 
everyone's now wearing beige. Everyone's now wearing. Um, everyone's now. Can we the, credit Kanye for uh, a moment, <laughs> y'all? I feel like <laughs> no, because, because I want to go back to what you're saying about Claire. Yes. Like that that moment where um people just want to go back to just nature, the nature, the, setting, the roots, the, the not being standing out exactly yes um, part of exactly because even when i go to um your your because i I remember the one experience you created at the gallery you 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 brought together different people in terms of just like just different makers you know Mm. and um we all didn't know each other but we had to somehow revert back to something to or collaborate something central yes that you could at least agree on exactly and that's what that's when we were able to tap into our different forms of luxury and mediums yes and mediums because you had furniture there yes and i do try and do this with thank you for reminding me of that (laughs) because we did that in covid yes but we had we we and I remember Craig not being happy with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Craig. I'm a do- but you did it because you transformed the whole space. Yes, because I do like, I don't like limitation. Mm. And I, I want to challenge constantly where and how things can be done. Mm. And even with what we're doing here, it's really saying, well, we might have to by the end of this season or podcast, um, completely throw out the idea that we've had or the definition of that we've had because, mm. and I and I don't want to lose the point around what your mom was saying because you actually have just planted a seed to say I must bring in somebody as a guest who talk, who's who's a linguist, yes. somebody who can help us capture the sense through language mm. and different languages yes. of how because there is a there is a common essence to it mm, there is there is a common but it all essence comes to it. back to african essence in terms of how we then in our traditional ceremonies adorn ourselves yes. how we then in our like when you even go back to these historical images of just the benin bronzes oh. uh, just benin um living and theory yes. of being in the world it it all goes back to this way of just purely adorning yourself without compromising who you are and i believe that 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 compromise is how luxury is is, is now um being not, watered down almost or yeah, become very consumerist not which, even it's it's separated itself from an everyday experience yeah. of who we are, because there's no reason why we shouldn't be adorned. But we were luxurious every day. Every and day. But because even with our baths, and when you speak about Benin, I mean, my friend is here, and her and her brother-in-law, hey, Paul, <laughs> and her and her brother-in-law, um, I mean, we, we, we were just socially at her house the other day, was so, was, was, he was say, talking about the richest man mm. in Babylon. Yes. And, uh, and how, um, and one of my other lives, right, mm. is, is documented entries mm. and I have this perfect vision and I'll, I'll, I'll materialize it of, of shooting, of going around the continent with diff- in diff- to different cultural centers and different art and artists and makers, tastemakers, mm. really chronicling, truly chronicling and immersing ourselves in the story and telling and documenting that story. Yes. Um, and he was telling me, because he's a, he's a producer and filmmaker and all of that, and he was saying that that's, that's when he thinks of us and our mm. identity as luxury or as black people or as Africans, mm. the story that resonates the most with him is The Richest Man in Babylon. And there's yes. a book. Get the book, guys. Yes. <laughs> uh, read our stories. Yes. You know? I'll actually, <laughs> yes. And I'll actually add, add a link mm. um, to the book um, in the show notes. Just, just for you to, we have to start documenting because there's so many of them. Mm. We have to start documenting, but also consuming. Hundred percent because it shapes the language. Yeah, because um, you speak about these great empires like Roman empires, yeah. Greek empires, but how uh, where many? is the African story? How many? In terms of our stories are so great because it actually sustained what we know as the world right now. Yes. It actually, in terms of even the most horrific stories, in terms of slavery, they took our best. 
they you know, did. and to to sustain capital. And they took our, they, they, they incriminated us in terms of our own stories, in terms of our own spirit, in terms of yep. our and the, and speaking in tongues. And they made it something that was like witchcraft, y yeah. you know? <laughs> because it was our ability. Yes. And again, there's, there's something here about language and we're, 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 we're almost out of our time, but there's okay. something here about language and as you're saying, speaking in tongues, mm. because, you know, if I'm to pull out things that have been key in this podcast, in this conversation, you know, there's, we've spoken about time and I think we've drilled on time quite a bit. Yeah. We've spoken about access. Yes. Um, and I want to get back to this question around, you know, art, you know, the parallel between art and luxury and, mm. and the point of accessibility, because, you know, it's, it, it is something that's reserved for the elite few, for the affluent so, so drawing on this connection, what would you say um, is the intersection between art and luxury? And to and a, a point two to that is what are the values that you regard as important in developing art? Democratizing it, be making mm. it more accessible. Because mm. if you look at some of these price, some of the items, you know, there's I was at um, an auction house um, the other day, and they were. I mean, there were pieces there going for three hundred k, like mm. easily. Mm. Um, but there were also pieces there going for, you know, five k, twenty k, and I I bought what was within my reach. But mm. access still remains, and I think it's almost a very intimidating world art because it seems like, you know, it's like first you make it, mm, <laughs> first you become you a clever to, black, exactly. <laughs> then but you like, make, then not, you move to a specific like, neighborhood, yes. then you drive a specific car. Then you buy art. Then yes. it's like, and I mean, uh, Jay Z and them have rapped about it. Um, and yes, it's beautiful for its investment value. But the initial point of accessing it, I find, is still, for the common person, is still is still very intimidating. Mm. To just walk into a gallery even is intimidating because mm. it's almost like you must understand what these strokes mean. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, like, it's because there's this perception of you need to know before you know. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that you don't. And that's a perception. Yes, it's a so perception. So can we correct that that's a perception? Yes. Because uh, you can, and I've spent endless amount of time with you and in other galleries and space, and wherever I go, even for mm. travel, I always try and find my way to the ga a gallery or a museum and stuff. Even when you grew, because you, that's how you grew up. That's you know? how I grew up. Yes. Uh, and, and, and how do people access mm. um, art as mm. a start. Like you're sitting at home watching this YouTube or watching, listening to the uh, pod, the podcast on audio. How do people access it? Okay. I think the first thing is to recognize that we are art as well because art is just an articulation of I who mean, we, tell them who <laughs> they. <laughs> of who we are. <laughs> like literally the only reason I got into art is because I wanted to express myself differently. Damn girl. So, um, I just think that what we do at the Morris Gallery is you try to demystify the fact that you need to be this person when you walk into a gallery. You need to have your story mm. figured out. Yeah, you, you must have Google Exactly. <laughs> or you need to pay. People or always you need ask. To pay. To, are, if you are, need to are, are galleries free to get to just... Yes, uh, it's, it's museums. Um, because museums are an archive. They archive the story in terms of um, basically who we are Got as it. people. But so you pay to get into yeah, museums, but pay. not all of them. Yeah, not all of them. Because there's most, community museums Exactly, as well. exactly. But in galleries, you shouldn't pay. And yeah, but I, I don't believe you should pay to there's get no into There's no cover charge, y'all. Come Honestly, one, come please, all. Uh, <laughs> I actually encourage people to come to the gallery because yes. I think that um, we, like what you're saying, we create exhibitions like Scalp Decks and we create Women's Month exhibition where mm -hmm. we grapple with what it is that women artists are doing, why they've been excluded. But I think that to enter into the space of a gallery, um, it's just like how you enter a shopping mall or mm -hmm. how you enter anything. And um, basically, it's just important to recognize that um, these spaces aren't limited to one person or one group or one setting. The same way luxury, African luxury, is not an experience limited to one person. It's and it, it, and mm. when you say that, mm. because, you know, there's this Western luxury is a very individualistic 
the West, to begin with, yes. is a very individualistic society. Yes. And we are co- collectivist as a society, right? Yes, very collective. Very you know, collective. People tease us Girl. about the black tax. So, okay. they, they, they we honestly, are together here. Yeah, even the stock file, which it, you're yes, talking about. It's very collectivist. Like yes. our society is shaped, is shaped and has its power mm. in being collective. Yes. And if we're not breaking ourselves down into silos, I think we, we discover really the true power yeah uh, collective power that we have even that's why music is so important yeah even when you look at the movement of ama piano yeah it's all about the shared experience it's all about different beats it's all about different moments you know mm-hmm. and that's what um that bring us yes that bridge together. yes and that's what the galleries are as well and that space of col- of communing exactly to understand you know and i think that that's the problem. We need to recreate the perception of why it is or question the perception of where it comes from that we can't enter a gallery, you know? Yes. And I think that um, even it's so funny, that, but not funny at the same time, is that um, somebody asked me, can I still come into the gallery because I'm wearing my jeans and Girl. stuff. And I'm like, you oh can boy. come into the you can come into <laughs> you the can gallery. come as you are. You know this is like church. Yes. Um, this and is even like taking church. photos. Everyone always wants to then afterwards take photographs to say that I was here. I I literally. Yes. It's like a destination. Exactly. Um, and even when you look at South Africa, people always thought that you need to go outside of Africa to, to experience, experience some l- of these. This beauty. Exactly, but the beauty resides, yeah. yeah. The, and that's what I'm saying, the beauty resides within. You can go to a gallery, you can interact with art, and literally, that's why um, being a curator was so important to me, because it was so important to realize that when you walk into a space like a gallery, you recognize yourself in that mm. space, so that you're not looking like, this isn't me. And that's why movies are so important because movies then are, movies do well because people see themselves. See themselves. In well, d- these days. Yes, yeah. But these days. And exactly. can the film, I mean, Netflix is doing a beautiful job and not to, and not to plug them, <laughs> <laughs> but to plug them. They're doing a beautiful job at Yay. telling our stories. And I mean, one of my faves is coming up, How to Ruin Christmas. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's, they literally have, have you know it, because also the production quality is so mm. excellent when we speak about mm. you know movies. But and what how you're doing is also like it's 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 um you are dismantling um something that was never people too scared to dismantle because I think that there's a certain tier in which people don't touch on yes. you know in terms of um platforms and how you literally go into the language of 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 mm. wealth you know and wealth in terms of of people you know yeah. and i think that people always um say that no why why can't we dismantle what it is that we've given so much light to let's break it down yes. to its foundations yes. i think and you're right and, and thank you, you to art. thank you for that yeah I mean, no really i thank yeah. you that you see that and you feel that because, because african is luxury really is essence. hard it is hard it's, it's girl, hard to actually personify <sighs> even i literally tell my language. burnout from the studies <laughs> it is hard it's and, very, and i'm very a product hard. of the west in terms of my my studies but i even then i was good. a challenge in the classroom for yeah. the for the lecturers but but a lot of them allowed me to go there, I must say, and I mm. must credit them for that because I was really... See- I'm like, okay, I see the journals. I see all of them. But mm. there isn't enough of a repository mm. of this information that I'm looking for. Exactly. And I really wish... Um, it's scarce because it's, so it's scarce. not supposed to exist. Because the moment it exists is a moment that it I... It enlightens. It enlightens. And that, that's why I always say to people... Maybe I'm being too political, but I'm an artist. <laughs> Girl, so go there. You, that's the activism. <laughs> yes, so that is. <laughs> but I believe that's why people were like Steve Beaker were killed because they would always revert back to this consciousness yeah. of who we are. Like we are, we, need we to are be, constantly be deconscientized yes, exactly. from ourselves. Because exactly. when you say, um, and and we are really coming to the end of this conversation now. But you know, you said. You, art is a, is we are art, mm. and therefore you went into art to want to express yourself mm. better or more. Yes. Um, 
So the deconscientization constantly through just minimizing it to just a brand that you bought and mm. the post social media also has is 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 has become an arena of showcasing just like consumerism in a very distasteful way for me. Mm. Um, but what what would you what is your ultimate luxury? And I know I've prompted okay. and probed uh-huh. and you've given me nuggets. But mm. w- two questions: as uh, literally, what is your ultimate luxury? And secondly, who are some of your favorite collectors? Because I think a lot of people listening or watching would want to know who are some of your favorite African collectors, mm. uh, African artists, I'm sorry, that okay. that you mm. you can collect, are collecting, have collections of, mm. um, or even curated, you know, uh, okay. who? All righty. Okay, so first give question. Us, give us, give us. Okay. And I'll, I'll put the list in the show oh. notes. <laughs> Just and 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 uh, lest I put your personal WhatsApp number. Oh. Jokes. No, I think go to the page, uh, go to the Melrose Gallery page, and find yes. out when the shows are on yes. and subscribe. The newsletter is beautiful because it actually yes. really gives you artist bios. It does. Um, yeah, Tyron's done a good job. Yeah, that. well done, Tyron. <laughs> um, it, it, so, but who are some of your favorite artists, African mm. artists specifically, and 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 lastly. Um, what is your ultimate luxury? Okay, my favorite, my favorite artist. I think I love. Um, oh, it always changes. It's such a hard, hard question to ask. It's like asking who's your favorite oh, child. Just, <laughs> yes, I mean, but I tell names. you, I tell you, I'm sure, I love I'm sure we won't exhaust. Yeah, <laughs> I love obviously. Brav, uh, pit, I'm not brav. I'm so disrespectful. I'm from Patikin Tuli. Um, because of the fact that he challenges material all the time, working with bones, etc. I think that bones always um, always refer to Africa as this dark continent whenever you think of bones and making. So I love him. I love obviously Yinka Shanabora. I love Police Walila. I love I love what Mary Sibande did love Mary for Sibande. me when I was growing up in terms of that superhero thing yes. and that I can to also be a superhero. I love And that. depicting women in power. Yes, in power, you know, where I've seen a lot of black women disempowered. Mm. So I love what she did for me when I was growing up. Um, I love Diane Victor because of just her mark making and how she curates and challenges society and it's she's very she's ruthless in terms of how she draws mm. but and 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 she's ruthless in terms of how she even depicts portraits and i just love the contrast between black and white and even the way she works with fire okay. and the smoke drawings i love her work and um i also um in terms of sculpture i found it rare to experience um, why I love because sculpt, sculptors are always never there but I felt like um, Nandipa and Tambo's works also vibrated with me in a with different you. way it is a feeling isn't yes, it yes yeah. you could walk and and you could walk into a space mm. and it will there's just one that will draw you exactly. one or two but there's usually that one exactly. that will draw you exactly. and experience it and I encourage everyone to go out and experience art you don't have to yes. buy art now no it's not about buying it's just experience because you got to like expose yourself yes to you have to find and what I, you love yes and i can't always afford it but i just you know it's like clothes yes it's like you go and you look at your favorite clothes so that you know what the your, shop. your goal exactly. is it's like an affirmation board it you know when you walk it, it in absolutely is. and yeah. what is your ultimate luxury oh my ultimate luxury <gasps> oh my <laughs> ultimate luxury is um I, I struggle to, uh, when you say ultimate luxury, what is it that you like? Just, okay, ultimate luxury, give me one second. Any, anything, in wha- in wh- however it lands in your mind. 30 seconds. Okay. Because <laughs> um, I'm an earth sign, um, just being within earth. Um, I think that, you know, like walking and taking these hikes um, is enough for me, you know? And I think that, looking at the landscape in which um, my God is curated and in terms yes. of how he curates art, I see his versions of beauty, of, of um, making with the mountains, with everything, with how the rain hits when you're walking sometimes. I think that that's my ultimate luxury. And so, that yeah. is it. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. I like shorts. <laughs> <laughs> my arms are short. I see both of us. <laughs> But thank you thank so much. You. And, and this is a lonely journey. Episode. It no, is. But and you're I'm doing here. it very well. Like, thank yeah. you so much. Thanks that's for reminding us. That's today's episode. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you.